Welcome to this video about how to do ticketing in ClickSense. This will show you what you can do with web tickets and how you control authentication with web tickets. In this video, we have multiple components. To begin with, a login. We have an authentication system, which can be a third-party authentication system or your existing portal solution. We have a user directory, which is the backend database you are using. We have the ClickSense proxy, and we have the hub, which is for users to access their data. The flow in this typically begins with the user trying to access a virtual proxy in ClickSense. That proxy will realize that you are not authenticated since you don't have a session cookie. It will then redirect you to your own authentication system, and that is configured in the proxy. Your authentication system then needs to figure out who the user is, and this is typically done by connecting to a user directory. It can also be a login form, or it may be that you already have a cookie that knows who the user is. Let's say that you're going to the user directory. The user directory will return back telling whether the user is authenticated. If the user is authenticated, it will send a request to the ClickSense server that this user should have a ticket. That includes the username and the user directory, as well as what attributes you want to go with that ticket, meaning there can be groups or other things which help to identify the users. Since it can be groups, you can use it in section access, and you also use it as authentication on streams. A ticket will be returned to the authentication system. That way, the user can be redirected back to the virtual proxy and back again to the UI, because now the user is authenticated. In this way, you can offload the entire authentication system, so you don't need to create a user directory connector in ClickSense to make the authentication work. We also have the option to go directly to the authentication system and then to the user directory. Then the flow will be the same reaching the virtual proxy and back again to the user. The difference here is that you do not start by accessing the virtual proxy, and there is a little more coding for this to work than if you are starting by accessing the virtual proxy. Now let's look at how this works in real life. Here we have a user form, and basically this should be whatever can be configured from your backend system. I'm using a test user and typing in a user directory and group. We can already see that we are coming back to the hub. We should now see that we are the test user with the test directory and we only have one stream to look at. That is because of how the system is configured at this point in time. Let's go back again. Let's try to log in with another user just to test that the user credentials are actually changing based on the different logins. We don't need to write anything in group, so let's just log in. We have a test user with demo dir with which we just logged in. So far, so good. Now we are ready for more advanced steps where what we are doing changes in the QMC. So let's go into the QMC and then into streams. What I will do here is to create a new stream called sales. Now I will press apply and under the advanced section to the left, I will change a little bit from the standard settings. I will change the name to be environment.group. So in this case, the environment says that this should come from the ticket. Then I say the group is equal to cost underscore one. Then you should have access to the stream. So user.environment means that it comes as an attribute with a ticket. And in this case, the attribute is called group. Now let's go back again to the streams, and then I will create a new one. This one I will call Sales2, and I will apply it. 
I copied the previous condition and I will paste it in the same place as the other stream and change the name to cost underscore two instead. I press apply and now we have two different streams, both with a different access rule, cost underscore one and cost underscore two in an attribute called group. Let's go back again to the login form. Now we will try to log in with my user cost1 and cost underscore 1 as group and press login. Now we should see that the hub has changed. We have the sales stream because we had that rule within the ticket and let's go back one more time. Let's try to log in with another user. So we use test demo and cost underscore 2 and login. Now we should see that we have the other stream and not the first one because we only have one group. Now let's do a little more and add the same attribute multiple times with different values. I will put in user1, dir1, and then cost underscore 1, a separator, and cost underscore 2, where now we expect to see both streams when logging into the system. We now have access to both of the streams. We have offloaded the entire process to your authentication system, and based on the ticket creation, it actually decides what you are able to see, and nothing is persistent in the ClickSense environment. Instead, it is controlled with every single login. If you have a very dynamic authentication system, then you can have this being as dynamic as your own system. This is very good when you see the hub. Let's see if you have the QAP, where you never see the stream names, and where this can be even more flexible. So in this case, we will go back and change the streams. I will go back to the QMC, and in this case, because we are working with the QAP, where you don't have access to the hub, change the stream name to cost underscore one. We'll apply this change, and we will also remove the security rule we created earlier. We can remove this by taking the bottom one and pressing delete. Confirm that this is fine, and go back to the streams. The result is not good since I forgot to apply the new name, so go ahead and open it again. Change sales to cost underscore one and remember to press apply. Go back again to the streams and open the other stream and do the same thing. We will call this one cost underscore two. Then go into the security rules and delete the one we created earlier. Let's go back again and make sure that we apply this correctly this time, so we don't make the same mistake again. Now when we go to streams, we have two streams. We have no additional security apart from the standard security rules. We are going back to the login form and let's try to log in. We should only see a hub with the stream named everyone present in the UI, even though we used one of the groups. It works. So let's go back to the QMC and try to change it a bit more. This time, we will go into the security rules. Let's create a new security rule. What we will do here is to base it on a template, which means that this comes from all streams or is related to all streams. I will call this one ticket, and you can see the resource filter says stream underscore asterisks, which means for all streams. This will be related to all streams. Here I can do almost the same thing to the username as we did earlier. So we change it to user.environment.group, just like before. But we'll change it here to say resource.name.
Resource.name means the name of the resource, which in this case is a stream. So if you are coming with a group with the same name as the resource, then you will be able to see the stream. We can now make this dynamic and control that across. Let's apply it and go back to the hub. Go back to the login form and log in. We will log in with test and demo with no group. This should give us an everyone stream like before and nothing else. Go back again and create a new login. This time we'll use test and demo1 and cost underscore one as group and log in again. Now we have the same name as one of the stream names, so we can see the stream named cost underscore one. With this, we can make the security very dynamic, and if it's used in a QAP environment where you never see a stream name, this can be one rule controlling all of your customers. Let's say we have multiple streams for a customer. We log in as before with cost underscore one and a separator and cost underscore two and press login. And now we can see both streams cost underscore one and cost underscore two. In this way, you can move the entire security out in one security rule in the QAP scenario where you are using either iframes or mashups. This is all controlled by the security rule here where it says user.environment.group equal to the resource name, so that should be something you can identify from your code base and then build it up dynamically. This is how ticketing can be used in real life examples and how to separate it into multiple customers in one ClickSense environment, essentially making multi-tendencies out of your ClickSense server. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching.